to the live stream. I'm Father Roderick, and today we're going to build some Star Wars Lego. Finally, your prayers have been heard. And after all the Harry Potter sets that we've built over the past few months, it is time for some vintage Star Wars sets. And uh, I think you can call this vintage now. It's uh, five years old, six years old, I think, this set. And uh, um, I have a few Star Wars sets, smaller ones, but this is a nice build. This is, of course, from The Force Awakens. It is the uh, speeder that uh, Rey uses on Jakku. And it's one of the more iconic uh, vehicles in that movie. And, uh, and I kind of really like this, uh, this build, or at least the image looks nice with the, the, I like the, the dark red colors that are used in this build. Plus, of course, it's got the minifigure of Rey with her, her uh, let's say her uh, Jakku attire that she uses to protect herself from the sun and the sand. That's good to see also uh, our uh, friends in the chat. I've missed you all. As you know, I've been away in France filming and this past week I've also done a lot of filming for my TV show. So unfortunately, not much time, not much energy also to do these Lego streams. But uh, hey, it's the weekend. So it's, it's good to see you all again. And also welcome to the people that are here for the first time. I hope you enjoy. This is a very casual stream. I'm not a Lego expert. Um, I do know my Star Wars, more or less. <laughs> but it's also an occasion to hang out and to chat about not just Star Wars, but about anything uh, that comes up. So um, feel free to comment in the chat. I'll be able to read your comments and of course I can, uh, I can comment back. Let's first open this box because of course it's been sitting on the shelves for five years. I got this as a thank you present uh, for, a, for a talk I did in Amsterdam. But that was really ages ago. And uh, I never got around to building this. So it's got that kind of nice new, uh, newer uh, boxing, which is very pretty. It's got uh, images on both sides. So here you see kind of like an action uh, depiction of, of how you could uh, play around with the, the toys. And you have some details here that are all very, very nicely done. There's a little bit of a blueprint, which of course is fake, but it's still fun. Uh, Pikachu, Pikachu says, I've been watching an awesome slice of life comedy anime called Saint Young Man. And would you would recommend it. Where have you seen it? Is it on YouTube or Crunchyroll or Netflix? All right, that's the contents of this set. We've got a few numbered bags as usual in these sets. We've got step number one, step number two. Actually, surprisingly few pieces. I, I, from the looks of the box, I imagine something a little bit more complicated because you see all these uh, details and it's actually a, a very nice uh, textured layered set. So I was expecting more pieces, but that's, that's good. I like simplicity as well. Of course, no set without our infamous stickers. So this stuff is going to be probably, again, very stress-inducing for me because I, I'm not very good at, at, at stickers. We've got a small booklet printed on very thin, kind of cheap paper. Feels a bit cheap compared to some of the newer sets that I have. And the first thing we're going to do is to build this hooded uh, uh, Jakku. Um, I think it's one of those scrap scrap uh, uh, gatherers, kind of like the Jawas from Jakku, I suppose. So they gather scrap and sell it in order to buy food. Hey, Claudia. Um, Claudia asks, can you talk about Star Trek Picard? What have you heard about it? I'm really excited about it. Well, as you, so as most of us have seen, we there is now um, a logo and a title, <laughs> which was none of that was very surprising. But we've also seen a picture from the set. And it's just a close up of uh, Patrick Stewart. Uh, and in the background, you can see some people, you see at least one person, I think, in a yellow shirt that kind of evokes uh, the, the shirts in the classic Star Trek. So that's very cool. 
Picard himself is dressed in kind of very muted colors, dark, you know, blue, I think it's blue and black. I wouldn't be surprised if this is from the beginning of the story where, um, I don't know, a classic storyline is, you know, you've got this retired captain who is enjoying his life off stage in a certain way. He's resting from all his adventures. And then something happens that shakes up the universe. That is classic storytelling. You need a crisis. And then in order to solve that crisis, perhaps they may want to uh, call for a very experienced starship captain to come back and something like that and and then he has to assemble a new team and will gradually ease into this that's i think what is the most the most classic scenario perhaps they will go a totally different route but i was um at least i was very happy that they didn't give us the photo of picard uh, as a French farmer playing the flute all day long, because that's the kind of thing that I've been dreading. It's like, <laughs> as long as it's not something super artsy, it needs to have space. It needs to have the classic ingredients that made that made Picard, you know, the, the captain that we all love. So it's going to be interesting. And have a wonderful evening and. Pikachu says, oh, it's on kissanime.net. I've never heard about that, but I can, I can take a look at it. It's about Jesus and Buddha living in Japan. <laughs> that is probably not canon. <laughs> All right, let's start and let's, let's start with this little fellow here. It's, I, I, I always felt that these um, uh, characters on Jakku in The Force Awakens had much less character compared to the ones in the classic trilogy. Um, they didn't have any lines, uh, they did, didn't really expand upon it, at least the Jawas get some real good action time and it kind of makes sense, they, they become kind of like these classic, I don't know, inhabitants of the Star Wars universe, whereas a lot of the characters that we saw in The Force Awakens and that were subsequently also turned into Lego figurines Nobody knows their name. You don't really care for them because, well, they're not really important to the story. All right, so here we have our little scrap gathering hooded masked inhabitant of Jakku. I suppose that this is kind of a mask or metal thing that they're wearing to also to protect the face or perhaps to filter out, I don't know, the sand. Who knows? So we're going to put that guy here and then as usual we start super simple this is where let every single piece gets its own uh, design so it's, it's really very kid friendly i think so well, let's start let's do this the way they indicate it um, we may actually be able to finish this in one uh, in one go that would be a, a record i don't think i've ever done um, an entire build in one evening but that's a good thing. There's lots of other Lego to explore. And maybe over time, we can do a, a more ambitious set again. I've been very tempted by the, the, the architecture set. Um, I'm, I've always been a fan of Lego architecture, but um, they have these city scapes or these city skylines. And uh, I, I always thought they were very pricey compared to what you would get because it's all micro scale, it's very simple, simple elements, but it, it's cleverly designed. That's what makes it interesting. You see San Francisco and you're like, yeah, that, that, that's San Francisco buildings. It's recognizable. Uh, same thing with um, London, but very expensive, like 50 bucks, 55 per city for something that is only, has no figurines, it's just for a display. So, but then I saw uh, that lately, uh, at least the, the, the Paris set had, had been uh, uh, priced down at Amazon. So that was cool. Um, and also the San Francisco set was slightly cheaper. Mm, but they're all around the 30, kind of the, yeah, the 30, 30 mark. So, um, 
it's still very, very expensive, I think. All right, let me uh, see if I can fix the built-in camera. Uh, that's a lot better. At one point, I need to get myself a better computer here for all these uh, Lego sessions. <laughs> um, for me, as a huge Trekkie, the new Picard series makes no sense, especially the uniform in that pic is not the same as the next generation movie uniforms. Well, obviously not. It, it, it's taking place at a much later date. They're going to go forward, uh, what is it, 30 years in the future. Um, so the same amount of time will have expired, be transpired between uh, in, in, the, in the real, well, in, in the Star Trek world, as has passed in our real world. So you need to kind of reconnect with Picard. And of course, the universe looks different. We don't know exactly what the universe is at that point in time, because it's a time, time frame that we've never seen in Star Trek. So yeah, uniforms have changed. And what we do know is that uh, Picard is, is no longer the captain that we saw. Uh, he doesn't have the same ship, the same crew. So they're gonna do something very different. So I, I think it's supposed to not make any sense, and I only like that. I, I, I would be very disappointed if this was just a rehash of, uh, of uh, let's say, the old Picard, like a, like a sequel after all these years to uh, The Force Awakens. I don't... Oh, The Force Awakens. I need to start <laughs> thinking before I speak. Uh, it's, uh, it, it shouldn't just be a sequel to, to The Next Generation, but... It's going to be something very different, also in style, according to what they uh, said in the interviews. It's going to be very different from Discovery, probably more character-driven, but it, I think it looks good. I mean, at least he's still bald. He doesn't have a beard or something like that. <laughs> I was like, oh, provided they keep him recognizable as the, as the Picard that we know. What am I building? For those of you that have just... Uh, uh, and start watching the stream. We're going to build a Star Wars, very famous Star Wars vehicle. This is Rey's speeder that she uses on uh, Jakku when we first meet her. Hello, Mike and Indy Jones. And Marfan. Well, thank you, Pikachu, for the... Uh, for the tip, I'll, uh, I'll go look it up. Is this for the 20th anniversary for The Phantom Menace? Um, no, this is actually just an old set that someone gifted, to me, gifted me a long time ago, but I never got around to building it. And uh, since a lot of you have been demanding more Star Wars Lego builds, then I figured, well, let's do that. Let's, let's do some Star Wars instead of Harry Potter. Okay. Well, Indy Jones, it's a pleasure to share this with you. I really uh, missed you guys, and I missed the conversations and the Lego building. Uh, just being honest, I did not like Star Trek Discovery at all. Lots of breaches in the canon, a lot of character changes. Is the, Klingon, uh, the Klingons... Oh, for instance, the Klingons, among other reasons, now they are making Picard. Yeah, oh well, meh, I, it doesn't bother me that much. As long as the stories are good, and I really like the second season of Discovery even more than the first one, it's, it's not, I mean, of course, it's, it's more modern, and, and, and it's, uh, it, they do take some license with the canon, but that doesn't really bother me. I mean, it, it's, it's not set in stone. You can't really, oh, if, if you stay stuck in the same stuff that, that we did around the time of the next generation, then isn't, nothing is going to evolve. It's not going to be, I don't know. I, 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 like, that, I like that they have cha taken a lot of risks and, uh, and, and, and they're trying to do something different. And I appreciate that. And of course, that is a matter of taste and every fan will have different... Uh, feelings about that, but 
I, I think it's been quite successful. And as long as it brings us back into that universe, I'm kind of okay with what they do. Okay, we need to put this seat in place, or I suppose this is a seat. Or maybe this is something more technical. Not sure. Let's see. It's kind of a strange little oval piece that I've never seen before. Not sure what, what it represents. <clears throat> Pikachu has been playing the Mass Effect trilogy on the PlayStation 3 with all the DLC. You're very courageous. <laughs> I've, um, yeah, Lego's back, Adam. And you're back too, which is great news too. All right, some orange pieces. And so I've heard the rumor that there is yet another Star Trek series? Or was it? No, wait a minute, that was Star Wars. Oh, wait a minute. I need to push this all the way through, okay. Um, so that the, uh, next to the Mandalorian, there would be another Star Wars series in development? Interesting, or it was another Star, oh, and we get the spin-off in Star Trek, of course, for uh, the uh, section, uh, what is it, section 31 or? Not very good with numbers. Okay. Which I'm not that interested in. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm more interested in, uh, in the Picard series. And I think that they will, they will do something. Uh, at least that will be quality wise it would be good if it, it it won't probably appease all the fans and some people just want the old picard and just bring bring back the next generation um but i i think uh patrick stewart is an excellent actor and he embodies something that is very dear to me in the star trek star trek universe so i'm hoping that it will be good and then, oh, there's so much buzz around that, you know, a spin-off with uh, uh, with Captain Pike. That, I think, would be an instant hit, and they would be stupid not to, to at least consider it. Because I think that the actor who played Pike, I forgot his name, did a tremendous job depicting... Um, a starship captain that was very much had the same charisma, I think, as had Picard. Very different, but he, he has that kind of old-fashioned Star Trek vibe about, around him, about him. And there is, I think, isn't isn't there like ten years between the Pike that we know from from Star Trek Discovery and then the Pike that we see in that one episode of the original series? So they, they, they could do 10 seasons, you know. <laughs> They're crazy if they don't at least try. But yes, things, things move and, and also... Um, I mean, that's one of the advantages of Star Wars. It's much easier to, to maintain that visual continuity because Star Wars always took place in a kind of a, a rusty, used world. And uh, so it's easier to maintain that visual style, whereas S Star Trek is all very shiny, and it's uh, uh, it, it, it's supposed to be super modern, and it, it was very modern in, when they made the, the original series. But then even the next generation did something very, very visually very different from what people expected. And... Uh, for, for one thing, they got rid of all the, the mini skirts and that sort of stuff. And nowadays, you ha I think you have to continue to innovate it. For me, it's all about storytelling. If the stories are good, if the character development is good, I don't really mind the changes, the visual changes or the, the adaptations to the canon. It's not the canon is not... It's not. It's not something that is has a much of a value in itself. It, it, the, the canon 
ultimately serves to bring a certain co coherence to a fictional universe, but it can also become something that stands in the way of, of new storytelling. And that's, I think, why Disney decided to uh, ditch the uh, canon of the expanded universe and start anew. And for a lot of fans, that was also something that was not done. That was uh, holy and you shouldn't touch it. And, you know, if we're talking about the Bible, I would agree, but this is fantasy. It's, it's, uh, it's storytelling. It's fairy tales. Anything, anything can happen. Hey, Com Commandant Torn, this is the... Uh, well, you know what? I, I could tell you what this is, but you can also just stick around and you'll see what this, what this will become. <laughs> That's the downside when people arrive uh, a little bit later in the game. They missed uh, the introduction, so they're just like, what are you building? Um, this is uh, Ray's Speeder. Okay, I think this is all still kind of like a... This is probably going to be hidden on the inside because it's, it's all, it looks very technical, all this. I, uh, I'm also very excited about Spider-Man Far From Home. It's not a very long wait, fortunately, this time. So who has seen the uh, Endgame movie more than once? <laughs> Just curious. I've only seen it once. I haven't had time to see it another time. But I also haven't really felt the need to, to rewatch it right away because, well, you kind of, the story is now finished and so it's got a, it's got ni a nice closure. So it, I may check it out when it's on Netflix or on Disney Plus when that arrives. Okay, this is definitely going to be something visible because it's got this blue dot and this looks like a canister that Ray may may be bringing along or a motor. This oh, probably a motor. Um, Austin has seen it four times. Wow, I have not seen Detective Pikachu yet. I love the trailer. It's on my list. It's on my list. As soon as I get some some time, it took a lot of TV production right now, so it's uh, and I'm I'm kind of, I'm 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 I'm, whoop, I'm on a roll. Sometimes I have these these weeks that I'm just really uh, making great progress with. Uh, with the TV work and I tend to just go with the flow <laughs> because I have to I have to film 14 episodes in just these these two months so that's a lot of work a lot of uh, stories that I need to film and tell and sometimes edit I think we're going to build a, a second version of this this looks all very similar. This entire build is very rectangular, of course. So. <clears throat> oh, I haven't seen Endgame yet. It's good. I loved it. I'm also very excited about Disney Plus. And we're we're going to get a lot of of Marvel and I'm I'm pretty confident that it will be good. One of one of my issues that I had with uh, some of the Marvel TV series on Netflix was that some were good and others were really not that good. <laughs> so I think they got a lot of talent on board also for for the Star Wars TV series. That is to me is the most exciting thing. We've never had live action uh TV series in 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 the universe of Star Wars. So I'm so curious to see if they can 
And also, I, I want to know what kind of style they'll give it. Will it be, will it be like classic TV? Will it feel more like a movie, like mini movies? I, I don't know what they're going to do. We've we've never seen good live action Star Wars TV, except for the uh, Christmas uh, special, <laughs> the Voldemort of uh, Star Wars. TV, the show who shall not be named. Okay, no idea what I'm building here, but I'll just uh, I'll just push forward. Loki is Pikachu's favorite Marvel character. Along with Thor, yes. Well, we, we've now heard uh, officially from the Russo brothers that um, Loki has, has survived Endgame. So he's, he's back. He's no longer dead. So I guess that's probably very important for, for the franchise so that they can continue to do Loki because he's been very popular. And I think there is a lot of potential in his character. He can both be the bad guy but also, in a way, the good guy, the, the person you, or the bad guy that you root for, which is always very interesting. Will you watch the, will you be watching the Witcher series? Well, probably, yes, yes. I played some of those games. Not, well, I just played the first game, to be honest, and a little bit of the third one. My husband and I are seeing Endgame for the sixth time on IMAX 3D. Ooh, I wish we had IMAX over here. But... I have to go to Amsterdam for that, and uh, that's a little bit too expensive. Although my movie pass actually also works in all the other pate theaters, but eh. It's been years since I watched something in IMAX 3D. I think it was The Force Awakens that I saw in IMAX 3D in the US. Um, don't hate the Christmas special, it's like the I like the Bia Arthur segment, not because it's good, but because I love Bia Arthur. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I really dislike the singing, let's put it mildly. <laughs> it was a... Oh, so full of bad taste. But at the time, you know, what did they know about TV and about where... Nobody knew where, where Star Wars was going to be 30 years later, so... I don't blame them. It's just <laughs> they'd probably not do do not they wouldn't do something like that anymore these days. Okay, nice. So we have this piece that we just built and this other one, and now you can see that these are actually gonna be two uh engines. They're gonna push the whole thing forward. So I'm gonna add this one on top of the other one, and then you can see. Here is the seat, I suppose, and this is going to make sure that it's going to going to push the the thing forward. Thank you for recommending The Wheel of Time on one of your videos. I'm really enjoying the first book. Oh, me too. I'm so totally addicted. Today I went for a walk. So I'm doing these training walks, 25 kilometers, and I listened to uh to the audiobook for uh four or five hours and it's just riveting and it feels very much like uh, the Lord of the Rings. There's these, these creatures that, that kind of evoke the, the orcs and the, what, the, what you call them? Uh, I forgot. But anyway, the, uh, the, there's this constant chase that's going on and then there is, yeah, it's, it's got a lot of great elements. Apparently, the books are going to be more different. This, is, this one is still pretty derivative of a lot of other fantasy writing. But apparently, it's going to be even better and more interesting and more kind of more, 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 more original in, in future books. Christian Harris, I wish I had your faith. Oh, well. The faith is different for everyone, so it's a, it's a gift that you can always ask for. And I don't think, if you ask for it, you will receive it. 
At least I think that's how it works. I don't know. I'm just a simple, a simple priest. <laughs> Alrighty. Father Roderick, do you like the Big Bang Theory TV series? Oh, I uh, love the Big Bang Theory. <laughs> I have them on uh, Blu-ray. I haven't watched everything yet. But yeah, I love that crew. I love that team. It's awesome. And it's a bit stereotypical. Some, some geeks don't like it because it portrays them in a kind of a cliche manner. But I don't mind. I just think it's hilarious and I love these guys and girls. Trollocs, yes, the Trollocs are, are awesome. The Trollocs are, kind of remind me of the, what's the, not the orcs in the Lord of the Rings, but the, the bigger guys, the, uh, how do you call them? Blanking out on this stuff. Um, all right, well, this is a fast build. I can't believe I'm almost done with the first bag. At the time, they still didn't know if they were going to make a second Star Wars. That's why George had a backup plan. He was going to adapt the Star Wars book Splinter of the Mind's Eye, which would have been cheaper. That's true, yes, yes. I've, I've read the, uh, the comic. It's a good story. It's, it's completely incompatible with, uh, with what happens in our, in our current canon. So I'm really glad that they, uh, they, didn't, they didn't go that route. <laughs> But uh, yeah, the Urukai, of course, the Urukai. That's that's what I was looking for. Hey, Simon, welcome. But the Splinter of the Mind's Eye, the, the comic is awesome. It's got a lot of that old Star Wars vibe to it. If you see what I mean? A little bit of a mystery, and it's. It's really well done. But in The Splinter of the Mind's Eye, Luke and Leia are not brothers and si brother and sister, which makes it a little bit awkward. <laughs> okay. Is Han even in that story? I don't remember. It's been a long time ago. Did you hear these clamors from certain fans that are now demanding that uh, they reshoot or re reboot redo the 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 prequels that's insane i mean the the prequels were are kind of cringe worthy from time to time but i don't think you can redo those it's it's it's, it's george lucas that's the way he wanted to tell the story. You can't always get what you want. That's kind of my point. Um, okay. And some some fans are so entitled that they they don't rest until. Is this supposed to be shorter? No, it's not. Okay. They just. No one want one want things to be exactly the way they imagined it, and well, it's not our story. <sighs> Did you know the series finale just aired for the Big Bang Theory? Yes, of course, but I've been avoiding the news because I, I'm I'm still a few seasons behind, so I didn't want to uh, ruin it for myself. I'm not sure what I'm doing here. Was this supposed to be touching that? I can't really tell. Um, hold on, this is a bit finicky. Let's see if I can loosen that up. Yeah, I think this is not right. I should probably level with those or not. Hmm. Let's see if I can remove it again. Let's see if I can push it here. I'll just keep them in the middle. All right. <clears throat> here we go. Uh, did you like the Star Wars Clone Wars? I've only seen the first season of Clone Wars, unfortunately.
the the um, the CGI. I've I've seen a, a few episodes of the animated one, which apparently story wise was very good, but I really couldn't get used to that animation style. I don't really like the way it looked. And it had a lot of fans, but to me it was just too, I don't know. I just didn't like the visual style. And that, and, and, and it was like a profound dislike. I was like, I, can't, I don't want to watch this. I don't like the way this looks. Yeah, the CGI version was better visually, but also uh, just a lot of seasons. And they, they, they were not available in the Netherlands. They didn't air anywhere. So you had to buy them on DVD or Blu-ray, and of course with Lucasfilm, you pay. You you. It's a jackpot. You know, it's so expensive, and I just didn't want to spend my money on 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 the whole Blu-ray stuff set. So, I'm for that reason alone. I'm glad that we get um, Disney Plus, so I don't have to buy all those. Those things. All right, we're going to build Ray. Now that we've, uh, they, they often do this. You've built like the first part of the, of the thing, and then as a little reward, you get to build another minifigure. <laughs> it's very funny. So, the Force Awakens Ray. Ray is actually one of the Star Wars characters with the least, the least changing wardrobe. Even in the glimpses that we've seen of, of the nine. Ninth episode. It's still very recognizably Ray. She doesn't have the fancy dresses like with Padme, Padme Amidala, who got like a new dress every five seconds. Um, it's very simple. I like that. <laughs> Bazinga! Is there a Marvel character you would love to see a movie or show that they haven't made yet? Let me think. Good question. First, gonna give her this bag. This is this is funny. I don't. I've never seen this element before. So it's a a bag that she's carrying on the, on her side, probably also to uh, lug around the uh, the garbage. Oh, I gotta <laughs> put her hand up and then slide it over her hand and then. Put the arm back so it stays put. Nice. Uh, we've got the face. And she's got two expressions. She's got a kind of a neutral expression on this side and then on the other side. She's a little bit more angry or more aggressive, probably. Uh, trying to... Uh, hit some sense into uh, Finn. <laughs> I really like the, the interaction and the chemistry be between Ray and Finn. And I, I, that's one of the things that I disliked about The Last Jedi is that they split up these two. I understand that it was necessary because Ray is going to you know, do her Jedi training. But still, I was rooting for those two. Let's see what... Uh, J.J. Abrams is going to do. Of course, now that she's becoming a Jedi, I don't think the two will end up together because, well, unless they will change that. That's possible, of course. The Jedi are no longer there, so maybe the whole celibacy rule will, <laughs> will, uh, will, will end. We'll see. This is very clever, the way they did this uh, staff, Ray staff, with uh, just three pieces. You've got these lightsaber uh, hilts, and then just a black rod. But the three fit together to make this nice pole that she can fight with. And uh, it looks actually quite, quite cool. I re Let me see. Can I show this? This is very, very nice. And then, of course, she also has the second... Uh, uh, the What is it? The scar for the... The thing that she uses is the helmet. In order to do that, I have to remove the hair and then put this over the face, I think. There you go. Now, that looks almost like an alien. 
Very cool. I love that gradual uh, discovery of who she was and it starts with this masked person that is raiding this old star destroyer. And that was great storytelling. <clears throat> very, very visual, like the mystery and gradually you discard, start to discover the, the person behind the mask, which is very Star Wars. Um, hello, Kyoto. Personally, I would love to see a Silver Surfer movie. That would be great. I've been rereading the original Stan Lee series. I love Stan Lee, but he was so great when he would pen the Silver Surfer. Actually, you know, the Fantastic Four has been one of my favorite Marvel superheroes. And I, even though the movies that we've had were not so good, I still really, 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 really loved the Fantastic Four. The, the last movie was terrible. I didn't care for that. But the original two, even with Chris Evans as uh, one of the Fantastic Four, he, he has a double career in the Marvel Universe. I thought it was hilarious. And I really enjoyed the, those, two, those first two movies. And I was gutted when... Uh, when they didn't make a sequel to that. And, and the fans were very uh, negative about them. I was not very familiar with the Fantastic Four, so I had only the movies to go by, but I really love those. I still love those movies, and I, <laughs> believe it or not, I have them on Blu-ray, and I rewatched them time and again. I, I must have seen them at least five or six times already. Isn't that weird? Everybody says they're terrible. I just like them. I, I, I think that the ensemble, I care for these people. I love that, that team building. I like how different they are. And yeah. So I, I would totally dig a, a Fantastic Four TV series. With the Silver Server in it, why not? In a few days, the Oculus, my Oculus Quest will be delivered. You pre-ordered it 19 days ago. That is cool. Let me know what you think. I'm delaying that purchase. I'm very much into VR. But, um, well, it's, it's expensive. And I already have the Oculus Go, which, of course, is uh, very simple compared to what the Quest can do. However, I have just discovered the most amazing thing. Uh, with a few software uh, programs, you can actually project, and this is amazing, I was, I was so baffled that this was possible. You can play certain games, not all of them, obviously, but certain games, you can play them in Steam VR and then send the signal to the Oculus Go, and it's got the same resolution as the Rift. And it, it, it works. I mean, your head movements, it, there is no lag. It is amazing. And so I, I first want to explore that a little bit. Apparently, you can play uh, Elite Dangerous. You can fully play that game on the Oculus Go using your computer sending the, the Steam VR uh, game to, to the headset. It, it's, it's just baffling. Do you like the Beatles? Of course I like the Beatles. Who doesn't like the Beatles? I, I like a lot of the classic ones. Uh, I, I don't listen to it all the time, but there's so, so many classics. Have you seen a movie by Ingmar Bergman? Yes, I have, yes. <laughs> and uh, it was... Um, <laughs> It was quite uh, hard to stay awake. It was so abstract and long, and but yes, I um, studied uh, media in uh, in Rome, and one of those courses was film analysis, and so we had to see all the classic movies, including Ingmar Bergman. Good grief! Three and a half hours, four hours long. <laughs> But, yeah, very artistically, very uh, interesting, but let's say it's not popcorn material. <laughs> I'm more of a popcorn movie lover. 
All right, so we made our first sticker or we printed our first, we placed our first sticker. This is the actual control panel that goes on this black, on these black studs. So that is what Ray uses to steer or to navigate. We then continue with lots and lots of small pieces. Some brown ones. That go right there. Now that the build progresses a little bit, I have to, uh, the, the, the drawings in the booklet are also a little bit more complicated, so I have to look what I'm doing. Okay, now we have the two handles that are just antenna, so we're gonna use these antenna pieces for steering. Which is a very, very smart hack, actually. And as far as I can tell, they go on these. There you go. That's one. That's two. These always feel very fragile to me. But look at that. It totally works. Uh, let's see. Here they are two handles that she can now hold on to. Very cool. Nicely done. All right, let's put it that way. Good. Uh, what else? Two of these? Where? Oh, four. Oh, okay, I see. These go here. Um, there we go. Starting to look much more like... I'm starting to recognize the shape of this thing, finally. It's a lot smaller than I expected. But nice, very nice build. Do, do you watch Bohemian Rhapsody? Yes, 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 that was awesome. Oh, Kyoto, the Quest is your first VR headset. You're gonna have a blast. It is so cool. And we're only at the beginning. I mean, this technology is gonna evolve so much. All right, we're going to use these uh, car pieces. These are used often in cars on the back. Well, they're going to be used here as panels as well to break the wind or something like that. And uh, they are going to be covered in stickers, which is scary. Hmm. Unfortunately, they tell me which sticker goes where. That's good. That is very good. All right, so this sticker. Let's put that one first. Ooh, these stickers are very thin. All right, that should just be in the middle. At least the gray is very very well color matched with the gray tile. So even if it's a little skewed, you don't really notice it. That's sticker number one and then sticker number two. Of course, this is all supposed to be rust, so it doesn't matter if it's a little bit, uh, doesn't have to be super, super detailed, uh, super in, uh, symmetrical. Here we go. I like the way this looks. Okay, so here we have our two wind break. The rust effect really works, I think. Okay, this one on this side, click. Oh, 
There you go. So now you can use these to steer. I already wondered how you can steer since something that looks so rectangular, but it's done with these is actually makes it uh, more uh, more uh, understandable how this would work in physics. Um, Uh, Hugh, or uh, I'm not sure how to pronounce your, your screen name. Uh, Mrs. Europe lived in Bitburg, Germany as a teenager. 44 now, and I miss, uh, miss it so much. Yeah. You should go there on vacation if... Uh, where do you live now? But that, is, that is a nice part of Germany. Okay. Um, we're back at the simple stuff now. Free comic day. I wish we had that over here. The Train Your Dragon movies. Yeah, I need to check those out. I've seen the first one, which I liked a lot. And I saw the trailer for the, the one that's in was in theaters just recently. But I skipped the second one. I guess they'll end up on Netflix. I think the first two are on Netflix, at least here. If only a day would have 48 hours. I would watch so much TV. <laughs> Mihu will be in Germany next week, traveling from the UK to Hook van Holland, Gouda, and then Northwest Germany. Nice. Very nice. I'll be traveling to the Vatican soon, or Rome. I'm going to do a week of filming there, and I'm currently preparing all the topics that I'm going to film. It's always a bit tricky because I've got four days and every day I need to film one 25-minute episode. So it means all the stars have to align. Otherwise, if you miss an appointment, I miss the opportunity to make that episode. So it's going to be very intense, but it's Rome. That means gelato. <laughs> and it means good pasta. Okay, so now we built this grill. This is going to be on the front of the speeder. So right here. I think this is it. No, other way around. Okay, there we go. Oh, now it starts to really have the, the shape that we know from the movie. Very cool. Will you meet the Pope? No, probably not. It's funny if you've been to Rome. I've lived in Rome for two years, two and a half years. And I've been to Rome so many times. The, the Pope is kind of like, oh yeah, it's the Pope. <laughs> I mean, on Wednesdays he's always there, and to be, uh, in, in in early days I would always go there and uh, go to the audiences, and I was like, well, yeah, but it's always, yeah, I know the Pope, <laughs> I've seen him so often, so let's film something else. I still love to meet him one day, but it's fine if that never happens because. I think other people deserve that more than I do. 
That's funny, with this Pope, I kind of feel like I already know him very well because he's so visible in the press and he feels like, I don't know, someone I know. <laughs> All right, we've got two more parts that are going to embellish the front of this speeder. I love this color, this dark red. Beautiful. You don't see that very often in, in, uh, in Lego. It was, of course, supposed to be this very rural thing, according to what I've read. This, uh, this is probably some kind of a farm, farm uh, vehicle. So not, not, not fancy at all. It's just like uh, the land speeder. It's also inspired by the land speeder. I mean, look at this. This is Ray's thing, and you turn it this way, and you put a minifigure in it. It's, it almost is a land speeder. <laughs> it's just on its side. But these were supposed to be just very utilitarian vehicles. Hey, slime ball. <laughs> You have been all over the world. Well, that's a good excuse. Well, I have not been streaming as much as I wanted because of uh, the week that I spent in, in France. But, hey, we're back at building Lego. Oh, you've never been to, uh, to Rome. Yes, you should go there. It's not very expensive. G gurgly says we had star wars celebration day in hungary i also bought a star wars lego set awesome which set did you get now i'm curious oh this is just one of the sides of the vehicle apparently very very smooth very cool. I guess we have to make two of these. Yes, indeed, we have to. All right. Just going to cover these like that. Okay. Oh, you're a pilot. <laughs> that explains it. That is so cool. What, what airplane do you fly? One of my good friends in the US is a pilot for Delta. And so, always oh, fascinating to hear his stories. He's got a podcast. Uh, which is absolutely great. And he's always chatting with other pilots. It's called the Airline Pilot Guy. It's always fascinating to hear the uh, kind of what happens on the other side of the cockpit door. And of course, there's always a lot of aviation news, which is always interesting to hear what, what uh, professionals have to say about that. All right, so we're going to cover up the two sides of this speeder now with these uh, two identical panels that we just built. And uh, it's actually super simple. I'm just going to click it in here. That's number one. And then we're going to click the other one in place. Just have to make sure. Oh, wait a minute. Wow, that's interesting. So the orange part is going to be on the. Wait, that's weird. Oh. Oh, indeed, that's funny. 
So I thought that this would actually be mirrored because of this orange uh, piece that is now going to be on the on the lower end, but apparently that's exactly what it's supposed to be. So it's not entirely symmetrical. You've got here is the orange part is on the bottom, and on this panel it is at the top. These can open. It's probably to be able to access the the motor or perhaps to store things in here. If this is more of a utilitarian type of vehicle. So there you go. It looks really nice already. Okay, let's go back. So these can open and also the these can turn apparently or are supposed to be it's supposed to be able to turn I think that's rubbish I don't think it's supposed to turn well it doesn't turn in my build oh well whatever um, okay Oh yeah, this is one of those crates that we can carry around on the inside. Um, so we're, we're only down to some f a few minor details already. And then we're done. So here we go. This is a little, whatever it is, console. And we can just open the door and place it in. And it should fit right in there. You see that you've got this box and it fits in this tiny space here. Whoops. And then we can close it. I can uh, bring it elsewhere. Very cool. Okay. Some more sticker work. Um interesting I would expect I would have expected those stickers earlier not sure why I have to apply them now but well I'll do it anyway um, I'm not even sure it needs these stickers. It already looks very cool. But, uh, oh well. There we go. First sticker. Um. Oh, they first want me to do this entire side, so let's be uh, obedient and do that. Oh, oops, almost used the wrong one. Sticker number one. Oh, shoot, I, I did use the wrong one. They're identical. What? This is rubbish. Oh well. Um. Very nice. Slime ball now flies an A320. The dream is to fly a Boeing 747. Yeah. That is an amazing airplane. Gergely bought the 20th anniversary Snowspeeder set. Oh, I love that one. It's great. Hey, Cliff. Cliff has been watching and listening. Well, rearranging his studio. Are you getting rid of all the audio stuff? Because of the... The, the roadcaster? Or have you already done that? 
Oh, we can also store a few more of these things on the sides. That's interesting. So, oh, wow. So we got a chainsaw. <laughs> That's why we had to put these holders into place. So we put the chainsaw here, or whatever it is. If they ever gonna do like a horror version of Star Wars, this is how they kill the stormtroopers with a chainsaw. <laughs> okay, that one's in place. What else have we got? Uh, binoculars. Okay. They go right there. Good. And then this. Oh, okay, I was, I need to add one more. There we go. I don't know what this is. Some, a gun or something like that, or perhaps a welder. Well, that is still quite nice, look at that. So here you've got all the equipment lined up, sticking to the outer side. I didn't see this in the movie. Cliff says it's all disconnected, but I haven't moved it all out yet. I just replaced the 23 monitor with a 65 inch 4K TV, holy cow. <laughs> that is a big screen. <laughs> Aiden wants to know if I liked school as a kid or as a teen. No, I did not like school. There were a few subject, match, subject matters that I liked, but I did not like school. I thought it was a waste of time. I had so many hobbies, and every time I was having to go to school, I was like, I, ah. I want to go and read about space shuttles and do fun things with my life. However, I did, of course, always what was required of me. And I was a good student. But even when I was in seminary, I used to skip a lot of the courses. I was like, man, just give me a book. I'll read the book and it's much faster than listening to this guy. Okay. Mm. Use this sticker here. And also another thing was I was kind of uh, a nerd as you can imagine. So I was, I was a very geeky kid, um, but I was in a time that geeks were persecuted. <laughs> it was not cool to be a geek at all. And so I would not, I was not very popular in school. I had a few friends, mostly also nerds, fellow nerds. That was another reason that I didn't like school. Because I felt that I was not like the other kids. And uh, nor did I want to be like the other kids. <laughs> so it's good to be alive now. Now that uh, shows like the Big Bang Theory have made it socially <laughs> acceptable to be a geek. <laughs> All right, let's put these in place. I think we're almost there. Ladies and gentlemen, the, there we go. Well, these are shooters. I'm pretty sure that was not in a movie. <laughs> Hello, 4G. Are you a Game of Thrones fan? I've been watching it, yes. I have No spoilers, please, because I'm still a few seasons behind. But it's a very interesting a series, yes. Very well done. Cesar is from Spain. Hola. Que tal? Cliff got the 65 inch TV for only 5.99 at Costco. Yeah, that is really cheap, yes. 
And I like LG. Is it a, an LED? I've got a very big LED uh, TV now from, from, uh, from LG. That was also dirt cheap. I think it was, it's a 70, 70 inch, 75 inch. It's huge. And it was, I think I paid $9.99 for it. It's like a, th a movie theater. The only downside is it's LED, so it's, uh, it's got a lot of light leakage. So it's not, blacks are not entirely black. But, you know, as soon as you start watching a movie, you, you tend to forget about that. And I, the TV that I was using, I'm now using as a monitor. Because I like to have a big screen. I also play lots of video games. So it's really nice to have a big TV screen as a monitor. It's not 4K though. But it works for me. No, that's not the right place for this sticker. Okay, first, sticker repair. Am I going to? Nah, I'm not, not going to bother. It's, it's good enough. I have to really stop being so perfectionist with these stickers. It's good enough. All right, and then final sticker. Oh, see that's so, such a weird moment to put these stickers in place. There we go. Very nice. Check it out. Shiny. Very shiny. Very cool. Okay. Um, we're done with the stickers. Alleluia. <laughs> Hello, Croatia. Adam says, don't bother with the last season of Game of Thrones. Yeah, I heard it. The fans are very divided. Have you checked out Twilight Imperium? No, I've unfortunately had no time yet. Hey, Brenda, I knew you'd like uh, me building some Star Wars Lego. <laughs> I did it because I listened to you all. <laughs> I've got a few more Star Wars sets that I'm going to build. This is a simple one. I'll finish the series anyway. The geek shall inherit the earth, yes. You got the Anakin Skywalker Jedi Starfighter. Ooh. I don't know exactly which one that is for only $19.99. Have you ever played Tabletop Simulator? Yes, I have. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, I tried it out, but it's... Uh, it, it's cool, but it's also a bit of a hassle. Um... I don't have that much time, so when I play board games, I tend to just go uh, to my friends and they will uh, set up the board and everything and I just play. <laughs> With Tabletop Simulator, you have to do so much. Okay, we're gonna weaponize these shooters. This is always something that I don't think these models need, so we put these red uh, studs in here. And then you press, I'm going to shoot at the camera now. Whoa, okay. That's what happens. You just lose the studs. I don't know. <laughs> Doesn't add much to the model. And I'm pretty sure there were no guns on the, in the movie on this thing. No matter how bad the last Game of Thrones season is, it can't be as terrible as the last episode of Angel. I have not seen Angel. I still haven't seen the Star Wars uh, SC-38 reimagined. I want to do a reaction video, but I uh, haven't had time yet.
the Lego one. What does that refer to? Anyway, I think we're done. This is it. We got a lot of spare parts. Unbelievable. I don't think I've ever built a set with so many spare parts. All this. You'd almost think that I skipped a skip step. Normally with IKEA, if I had so many spare parts, I would have seriously I would have serious doubts about <laughs> about my uh, the end result. All right, we're good. so we're going to put um her scarf on because of course she's riding this thing and she, you don't want to get sand in your eyes. I'm going to put her in the seat. There we go, that fits really nice, nicely. Oh, it even has a holder for the stick. I did not notice that. That is so cool. All right, so I'm going to put her there. She can even steer with these sticks. So I'm going to put that in her hands. Wow, that is amazing. And then the stick, her weapon. How would you call this weapon? I don't even know. We can put that right there. Oh, I like it. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the finished, what you call this thing? The finished Ray's speeder. And I have to say, I really like the look of this thing. It's got the nice grill. So you can see it's a very industrial design. This is uh, like something you would use on a farm or something like that. And then this is the more elaborate side. You've got some rust here. And then here is all the stuff that you can use. The, the chainsaw, of course, is used by Ray to uh, extract parts from from imperial um, waste. And this is the back, which just has these two engines. And as I mentioned, you can also open these doors, which is also something that we don't see in the movies, but it kind of makes sense. And on the inside, you can see a small compartment where you can store your items and you can close this. Am I a Doctor Who fan? Yes. And who's my favorite doctor? Well, Baker, but, um, not sure which doctor that is, but I grew up with Baker. And, uh, and I also really like uh, the last two doctors and, and David Tennant also a uh, great doctor. All right. So we've got this little fellow that actually has nothing to do with the set, but I guess we see him walking around on, in, on Jakku as well. So they just wanted to include an extra minifigure with this. So what I'm going to do is to try to create a Lego kind of a scene. I want to kind of pose this, but I feel that I can't just put this on a shelf. It needs background. So that's going to be a, kind of a more creative um, endeavor is to try to find a way to create a little, I don't know, a desert scene around this. But uh, that's going to be for another time because I need to, um, I need to wrap things up. Tomorrow is Sunday. I have two masses, one of which is a first communion mass, which is also always a little bit uh, stressful because it's different and it's lots of kids and well, it's a lot of people management. And I'll check out your Instagram story, Cliff. Uh, Kevin says, I was wondering if a layman could go to the seminary just to study the faith without becoming a priest. Um, probably not a seminary, but you can study uh, theology at a university. There are also uh, local, um, like every diocese probably has some kind of a formation that uh, for lay people. Um, you can also, if you're, you're new to the Catholic faith and you just want to get the basics, um, there's something called the Alpha Course, which is really cool, uh, cool concept where you get together a couple of times, uh, um, I think every two weeks or something like that for a certain amount of time, and you get the, kind of the basics, but it's also with a group, so you kind of cook together and eat together. It's a really great, cool formula. 
Um, that is also uh, very, very handy if you want to kind of get the basics of the Catholic faith. So many options. Just uh, take a look at your local diocese, your local area, and just look for some Catholic websites, and they, you can probably find a lot of information about what's available in your area. Oh, Tom Baker was uh, doctor number four. Cool. You, could you review a noble collection wand? You mean like a Harry Potter wand? <laughs> if I had them, I only have a cheap knockoff Chinese wand. <laughs> hey, I'll review anything you send me. <laughs> RCIA in America is also a good option. That's true. All right, I enjoyed uh, seeing you all again. I, I really uh, miss these, these chats if I don't do them. So we're going to do uh, another Star Wars build next time. Um, I'm still going to keep it a secret which one that is, but uh, you'll have to tune in. Stay subscribed to the YouTube channel. Make sure to also click the bell icon if you want to get notified when I go live. And if you know anyone else who is interested in a priest building Lego and chatting with people watching, then uh, pass it on and uh, spread the word. I'll talk to you guys soon. Have a great Sunday and um, thanks for watching. Bye.